training is very timely in that it coincides with the marking of the 20th anniversary of the United Nations uh, Security Resolution 1325, which is on women, peace and security. So um, this capacity building is strategized to promote the participation of women in peace, security and also their representation in uh, areas of decision making in the state and in government at all levels. So you need to frame your strategy. The second one is organizational strategy, how you involve leaders. In the first step, you realize that maybe you will be doing it alone, on your own. Then at this point, you need to involve leaders, all right? Individuals and groups, uh, and address policies, practice, and organizational It's still the same, the same thing. But at this point, you need to involve people. Why is organization? Because you need a system that is already working. And this training was geared towards empowering the State Implementation Committee to first and foremost know their roles and responsibilities, as well as um, know the objectives, what are the expected deliverables within the lifespan of the SAP, what and what are they supposed to do. And again, um, there was a gender training to just build their capacity around it. There was also a refresher around the 1325, the National Action Plan, as well as their own state action plan. So basically, it was to give them more of uh, a strengthening to uh, how they would execute the work of the SIC, which is the State Implementation Committee in Bauchi State. The entire process, I think I would say, is unique because this is the first uh, international project that so much concern on people living with disability, especially women. Because the UN women keep on emphasizing, even during the capacity building, that people should always put at their back of the mind that people with disability do exist and they, have their, they also have needs. During completes, they need to be the first priority. With the new action plan on board, it will remedy some of the inequalities that women are faced. Because there are women of substance in both states, but because there is no any working document to guide the government on the implementation of such policy or programs, there are a lot of inadequacies. But now with the new action plan, each MDA, other non-governmental organizations, have a specific role to play in ensuring that women are fully participated in different government programs. An issue of gender violence, gender-based violence, will be reduced to the minimum, minimal level. Experience is, um, is lead to collaboration and coordination between the various agencies. We understand um, the key roles that uh, many agencies in this state are supposed to play, which uh, before they have not been doing that. But now, with the coming of the implementation committee, the state uh, agencies are coming together they do discuss issues regarding the uh, gender, especially the women, um, issues around women participation. So it's a great uh, experience. Uh, we now understand if we team up together, we'll be able to achieve a lot of uh, activities that will yield results in terms of uh, gender-based violence. Being a custodian of laws within the state, with our head, who is a commissioner of justice, as the chief law officer within the state, I will make sure I make them believe that women have a lot of roles to play for society, to have 
a law-abiding society. I will encourage them to encourage the government to get uh, laws, to support laws that are that consider women. We are at the rural community, most of the women. Uh, there is a key role that someone is supposed to play or is playing in terms of improving uh, women understanding about gender in particular. Personally, my role is to ensure that all the LGAs that we have branches in Bochi, as you know, we have branches in the 20 LGAs, are carried along on these activities. They not only in, in Bochi metropolis, but uh, the entire local governments. We have supported this. It started from the Commissioner of Police. The Commissioner of Police is a human rights champion, whereby most of the times human rights uh, advocates came to the office. He gave his accent to them. But whatsoever, when it's uh, anything that uh, has to do with women, he is more gender sensitive and he may give them all the benefit of what they want. In my own way, I will ensure whatever plan the state government has, if it is enrolled out, I make sure it is implemented to the latter. In my office, where well, we have, because as a policeman, we have women police too. So I um, will make sure that we give the women too mouthpiece. I'm a man, but I'm he for she. I believe that in whatever position I find myself, whatever I will do in terms of appointment, in terms of welfare, in terms of programs, I will take into consideration how many women are going to participate. So now they are aware that they are right to ask for even government to support them or to put facility in place for them. Women need more clean water and sanitation spaces for personal hygiene. In particular, women menstruation and women are more vulnerable to harassment and violence when collecting water, using shared toilets, or practicing open education. Do we agree with this? Public enlightenment is another important thing to do. Um, all the various agencies in the state, Ministry of Women Affairs, uh, National Orientation Agency, and similar agencies should come out and enlighten the on, on, on this radio, television, come out, pamphlet, educate the public, let them know what this action plan is all about. Not just come in here and discuss and go home, it's on paper, it's kept there. Challenges. Maybe it is not now, but we are looking at it in the near future, how we can be able to, sus to sustain the group, that is the, the committee as a whole. Uh, will the Ministry of Women Affairs continue after the exit of ALAD, continue with this uh, meeting? Will they be able to carry out the functions and the support the ALAD are given to them. There are some challenges. The challenges, maybe from religious perspective or traditional perspective, because some have the notion that women should not be allowed to reach certain level in their endeavor. There's no any challenges in international alert, I can say for now, and women appears, they are always accommodated. They are now involving us much actively in their programs and activities. You see, it's interesting to know that a state like Bauchi, which is strategic, which, is, um, which borders a state like Plateau, which from time to time we hear pockets of crisis, having a state action plan uh, was actually a milestone. In the NAP pillars, we have um, the first pillar being prevention. But in Bauchi State pillar, they prioritize their first pillar to be participation and representation of women. They realize that this is a big challenge. There's a huge gap in terms of participation and representation of women. So what we have at the national level as a priority is not actually what is 
in Bauchi State uh, as a priority. So for that, I even give them a plus to be able, for the fact that they were able to see that this is their pressing need. And I'm sure since this was a document that was fully participatory, uh, there was no consultant from anywhere that came to write this document from them. Um, fortunate enough to be part of the process from the consultative where we had to move around some local governments, uh, conduct focal group discussion, key informal interviews, all in the build-up. And we saw the enthusiasm and the willingness for them to have this document. So I think it's a big plus for International Alert for championing this cause as well as UN Women to see that Bauchi State now has a state action plan.